Hey guys, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this aged stone cake that I decorated with some wafer paper flowers and some leaves. And I'm also going to show you how to make a flower using some edible crinoline. So first of all, we need to make our flowers. Now I'm just using some 26 gauge wire, cutting it down to size, making a loop in the top, and then cutting some of the wafer paper down so that I can use it to help attach the petals to the stem. And this is some uh, wafer paper conditioner that I will attach a recipe to in the description below. And all that does is it actually makes it very, a lot more pliable and easier to work with. And I just set that aside in a foam cake dummy to uh, set up a little bit while I prepared my leaves. Now I'm just using, I used a rose petal cutter and I'm using that as my template to cut all of these petals. Now I did half of the petals with just the wafer paper plain and then I did half of them with um, some edible crinoline. Now I will attach a link on how I make this edible crinoline as well. I like to use this and this is, um, I thought it added a nice little texture difference in these flowers. These are kind of a fantasy flower. They're just supposed to be um, kind of whimsical, I guess would be the way to describe it. So I went ahead and I grabbed my stem, my uh, floral wire with the, um, the little wafer paper center that I put on there and I just wet it down a little bit again and then I just attach those petals to it and just set them to the side until they dry and set up and it only takes maybe about an hour to do that. You can leave them overnight if it um, is a little easier and you feel a little bit better about it. And in the meantime we're going to go ahead and make our little leaves. I'm using the same wafer paper. This is zero grade wafer paper and I just use this shaped cutter. I'm not even sure. I think this cutter is meant for a different flower altogether, but the shape of it combined with using a mold gives you a really neat little um, leaf pattern. And this is my mold, my leaf mold. And I just added a little bit of that wafer paper conditioner to the leaf, placed my, my um, floral wire on it and added another piece on the other side. So it's double thick. Then I sprayed it with some more of the wafer paper conditioner to get it to take the texture. And that is corn flour, or corn, I'm sorry, cornstarch that I dusted below it and on top of it and on top of my flour former there to keep it from sticking. Now just go ahead and set all that aside while we work on the cake. I did the flowers before and now we're going to do the cake. And I also made these fondant pieces the day before. And I'm using my creme brulee torch to add a little bit of a crust on the outside of it so that it gives it some texture. It is a very good idea to prepare those at least a day in advance so that and leave them sitting out on the air so that they can firm up and crust a little bit or actually quite a bit. Don't be afraid to let them crust some because if you're doing the aged stone texture you want texture and the only way to do that is to have some dry pieces in it so go ahead and do that the day before. And now we're just preparing our cake by putting a final coat of buttercream on it. Now you can do whatever color you want underneath this texture, this um, technique. You don't, you can just do white if you want. I wanted to add a little color because I've done this technique before, but I wanted to change it up a little bit. So that's why I'm doing this more of a minty color underneath of it. And just go ahead and pull that upper lip into the middle so that you have a crisp corner. Um, since you're using the fondant, the crisp corner doesn't matter as much because you're not going to see much of that buttercream. But I, I kind of can't just leave it, leave well enough alone. I had to, I have to finish it off. And then we're taking the dried pieces and just crumbling them up. These have to be dry enough to hold the crumbled pat, you know, shape. Otherwise, um, if they're too soft, you will just end up making them into a soft fondant again. And that kind of defeats the purpose. So just driving it home again, do that the day before. Then I'm just using the other pieces and I'm just kind of marbling them together in just a half a half hazard pattern. I wanted these pieces to not have a whole lot of rhyme or reason to them. And I did smaller sections and then I'm going to piece them all together. And I tried to vary the colors a little bit uh, 
to get uh, some more interest, visual interest in them. And when you roll them out with your, uh, your roller, that's when your pattern will, will come out. And you can see right there, there is some textured pieces within it. Can you see those little pieces in there? That's what I was going for. Now just continue this with all of your pieces. And I rolled these to about a quarter of an inch thickness because when you roll them together, when you place them together, you're gonna roll them out even thinner. And I'm trying to prevent any edges that are too smooth. And the way you do that is just by kind of pulling those edges apart, just like that, just kind of ripping it. And just stick them together. If you need to add something to get them to stick together better, go ahead and use a little shortening or even a little bit of water if you want to. Now don't overthink this process. Just kind of smash them together. Otherwise it's gonna look too thought out. And this is where you go ahead and you roll them together. Now I'm gonna rip them apart again, yes. But if you wanted to put this as one solid piece as a panel around your cake, you could do this. But I decided to go ahead and rip them into smaller pieces, but having different patterns from different pieces within the pieces that I put on the cake. Does that make sense? <laughs> Otherwise it would have looked too um, patchwork quilt. I wanted it to be marbled together more. And then go ahead and stick on your crumpled pieces just to add a little bit more dimension. And I did put a little shortening before I put those pieces on, but I didn't show you that. And right here is where I went ahead and I ripped it into pieces and I'm just placing them on the cake. And the cake had been in the refrigerator while I was preparing the fondant. So when I took it out and it's coming to room temperature, there's a little bit of condensation. So I didn't have to add anything to that buttercream to get them to stick. But if you do need help, you can brush on a little shortening. You can spray it with a, water, a little water. That works just fine too. And just piece them together. Just remember with this technique, do not overthink it. That's where I think a lot of people get intimidated is they overthink it. You can't, you can't plan this out ahead of time. It just, it designs itself as you go. And I just use my fondant smoothers just to go ahead and try to sharpen up those corners just a little bit and just smooth them down, make sure that there's no air bubbles underneath the fondant. And I pushed it down around the board, around the bottom and then I cut off those extra pieces just using a sharp tool. You can use a sharp knife, you can use an X-Acto knife, whatever tool you prefer. Now, while that is firming up in the refrigerator, I'm gonna go ahead and put my leaves together. I'm just using some, some floral tape to um, attach them together to make one bigger piece out of them. I did three different, different um, sections of leaves so if you have smaller leaves, if you bunch them together, you get a bigger presence with your leaves. So that my flowers were bigger and I knew that and I knew them just putting them in separately, individually, they disappear. But if you put them in like a swag pattern, they take up more space, more visual space and it makes more sense. And there you go and just kind of separate them to get them to look the way you want them to, so that they look a little bit more, I hate to say natural, because this is not a natural cake. The cake is, but the flowers aren't. They're more um, whimsical. And I kind of like the mixture of that with the natural aged stone. Putting the two, the two together, since there is a overall lighter color to this cake, there's not a lot of deep colors, I think it works well together. And I just did a cascade down the side. You could arrange these any, ways you, any way you want to. And then I'm just using some extra pieces of the edible crinoline to fill in any gaps. And it ties it together, I think. And then at first I did not do this little touch of gold, but I think it was just a little too, hmm, I don't know. It just didn't have as much bang. And I think adding some of the gold around the edges kind of kind of made it make a lot more sense and tied it all together, made it more cohesive. And this is just my, the um, edible gold luster dust. 
and some Everclear is what I use to make a paint out of it and just brush it on. Just add enough Everclear to the gold dust um, to where it's paintable, not too thick, but not running. And as you paint your, if your paint is a little thin to begin with and it oxidizes, as it oxidizes, it gets a little bit thicker. And I touch the very tips of the leaves just to add that finishing touch. So there you go, guys. I hope you like this new take on an aged stone cake with a new type of flowers made with an edible crinoline and wafer paper. So I hope you decide to give it a go. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.